You are high and lifted up, O oh God. You are lofty and exalted, O oh God. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. None can compare to thee. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are excellent. You are great. And we worship you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We may take our seats. Very excited to have MS Fred and family here. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Amen. And God bless you all in church, church online. We thank God by faith, knowing that next year, God willing, yes. we will be free from this oh. online business. Yes. Hallelujah. How many are looking forward to be, being free from this online business? I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue. Of course, we thank God also for our miracle service yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. That it went well. Amen. We pray for many souls, which is the main thing. That those who watch it later on, many souls would surrender their lives and hearts to Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to continue with the determinants. Determinants. 
determinant. Now, let's read from our key text, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift or to the fast or to the one with speed, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Hallelujah to Jesus. So from this verse, we can clearly tell that there are certain determinants that can lead to prosperity or blessing or favor. There are certain things that when done can lead to success. Number one is speed. Number two is strength. Because we all know that the stronger the army, the more likely they will win. When you are fast, you win a race. Hallelujah. Neither bread to the wise. Usually when you are wise, you have riches. Actually, the Bible says in wisdom's right hand are, it's long life. In wisdom's left hand, riches and honor. So wisdom comes with money and every, a lot of blessing. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. When you have understanding, you have, you have abundance of riches. Your revenue becomes a, 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 a blessing. I mean, even more precious than silver or gold. It's just a great blessing. Nor yet favor to men of skill. When you have skill, usually you have favor. Because imagine you're at work and every problem is solved by you. You know you have skill. That's what happened with Daniel. He, will get, he gained favor. Daniel became second in command. And, I mean, think about it, in three separate regimes. Nor yet favor of men, but time and chance happened to them all. So even though these five determinants are very, very important for success, yet there are things that can negate those five determinants and make them nothing. Hallelujah, yes, Proverbs 3.16. Yeah? Length of days in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Hallelujah. So the, the, even though these are five things that should bless us, there are things that can negate those things. And we've talked about them. You can be, you, you can be fast, but you are in the wrong lane. Mm, it's, it's, yeah. it's negated your speed. You are strong, but someone through wisdom will defeat you or subdue you. Then the Bible talks about the poor wise man who delivered a city. But he was poor. And because of his poverty, no one remembered him. So imagine a man who delivers a city that is about to be annihilated. And yet, after that, they clap for him, thank him, and then give it a few months, a year, a few years. They've forgotten about him. No one remembers him. Think about that. And, of course, that's because he was poor. Even though wisdom is supposed to bring riches. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. When you have understanding, we have understanding. Usually, we are rich. And we always receive favor when we have skill. So all these things are there. But the devil, time, chance can negate it for the unbeliever. Hallelujah. But even for the Christian, without God in it, it can be negated. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God, or whatsoever is initiated of God, or whatsoever is, is started by God, overcometh the world, or overcometh failure, or overcometh a, a, a distraction, or overcometh a lack. Anything that is the world represents a negative thing. So the Bible is saying that whatever is initiated by God. Whatever God is in, if God is in something, it will overcome the world. It will succeed. It will excel. But the victory that overcometh the world is our faith, meaning that the engine that gives us victory over the world is our faith. But faith in what? Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So, without God in it, we cannot succeed. But we are Christians, and we are, no, we, are, we are believing God, and we are assuming and agreeing that God is in what we are doing. Hallelujah. Because we are Christians, God is going to be in what we are doing. But we must remember, 
Trust in the Lord in, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct your path. Again, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct your path hallelujah so when you trust in the lord with all your heart and you do not lean on your on your own understanding because we need to lean on his understanding, the superior understanding, the spirit of understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding because if you lean on it, you realize that you are, it looks like you are going down. It looks like things are not working. But the man or woman of faith, anyway, I'm not preaching on faith. Let me just state it and then we'll continue. <laughs> the man or woman of faith is not looking at what they can see. It's not looking at the circumstances, what they can smell, what they can see, what they can hear, how they feel. A man of faith is not looking at that. A man of faith is looking at the word. And because they are looking at the word, it's covered. So do not lean on your own understanding, but the understanding of God. In all your ways, the small ways, the medium ways, the large ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Talk to him. Let him be the part. Let him be a part of what you are doing. Acknowledge him. God, thank you for being in it. Lord, I want you to be in this situation. Lord, what should I do in this situation? Lord, I'm involving you in this situation. Acknowledge him and acknowledge that he is the one who is in this situation. He is the one who is blessing you. He is the one who can keep you and I. Acknowledge him in all your ways and a promise. He shall direct your path. When he's directing your path, it's not always sweet. Anyway, let's continue so that I get to keep the message. <clears throat> how many are getting what I'm saying? So now, how to improve your wisdom? James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him. So if any of you lacks wisdom, but if you, if you, don't, you don't feel you lack wisdom, then you don't qualify for this. Because it is for those who lack wisdom. So since I lack wisdom, Lord, I need wisdom. <laughs> if any of you lack wisdom but realize that this wisdom is not the earthly wisdom that one it comes with experience and you can get that earthly wisdom but earthly wisdom is not enough it's important earthly wisdom is important but it is not enough because earthly wisdom comes through what what are some of the things that bring experience school experience money M marriage yeah marriage like because you, you you've experienced marriage so you'll be able to explain it yeah. so all that now so it means that the more the experience the more likely you would have wisdom but satan from adam satan from adam has mastered the earthly wisdom He's mastered it from all the way to Adam. And he, because of that, he knows what causes people to stumble in general. He knows what to put there. Don't forget, he's the master schemer. So if you and I are going to only rely on earthly wisdom, we will get to a point. But the Bible talks about the fact that we are talking about a wisdom not of this world. That comes to naught. But the wisdom of God which the princes of this world had not known. Because if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. God's wisdom is so superior that even when you and I are operating in it, we might think we are not even doing well. We might still be praying, God, why? We'll be asking God, why? Because we don't even know what is happening. The devil doesn't know. But once we operate in it, we realize that we are on top. We are on top. 
So this wisdom is not the earthly wisdom we are asked uh, here. If any of you lack wisdom or the spirit of wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. Meaning that God pours it liberally and does not rebuke you for asking. So you can ask God, give me a lot of wisdom. God will not abrid us for that. But he will give to us. He just requires that we ask in faith. In the next verse. But let him ask in faith. Hallelujah. I don't even want to start there. How many are getting what I'm talking about? Let him ask in faith. Now, there are steps to developing wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. The first, which is very important, we talked about it last week. We're just having a quick recap. Noticing, recognizing things is the first step to gaining knowledge. I think it's a bit too loud. The, or there's some feedback. I don't know if you can just look at it. The sound. Noticing, recognizing things is the first step to gaining, or it could be this. I don't know, but it's just a bit. Maybe it's that. Uh, hallelujah. Let's see if it's better. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think it's better. Is that. Okay. Thank you. Noticing, recognizing things is the first step to gaining knowledge. People who lack wisdom do not notice things. They don't notice things. Revelation 1.11. So you and I must learn to notice things. Notice what is around us. When God is doing something, notice it. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. So what you see, what you've noticed, write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Because he was seeing so many things. Now what have you noticed? Write it in a book. And send to the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus. That's where we have the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is the epistle apostle wrote to the church at Ephesus. And unto Smyrna. And unto Pergamos. And unto Thyatira. And unto Sardis. And unto Philadelphia. Philippi, the church at Philippians, the church at Philippi, and unto Laodicea. Hallelujah. So the key is what you have seen and noticed right in a book. So noticing, recognizing things is the first step to gaining knowledge. People who lack wisdom do not notice things. So for example, we talked about it last week. Moses, he was watching the flock. As he was watching the flock of his father-in-law, he realized that there was a bush with a lot of flames. Like the bush was burning. Bush fire, but the bush was not being consumed. Even though there were, there were flames. So he said, let me turn aside. So he noticed it. He must not have been the only one there. There must have been other shepherds. But he noticed it and said, let me turn aside to see this great sight. And when God saw, praise God, Michelle, let's put our hands together for her. And when God saw that he had turned aside, then God spoke. Hallelujah. So you and I, it's very important that we notice the things God wants us to notice. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Let's move to the next, since we talked about that last week. The two, number two, considering, thinking, meditating is a step to wisdom. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 to 34. So the first thing is that let's observe. God likes us to observe. When the prophet saw Zechariah, saw the, 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 the angel, the angel said, what do you see? What do, what do you see? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Oh, okay. Proverbs 24, 30, 34. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles and covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. So imagine you are, you, are, you are outside 
and then you look at a house that is abandoned or there are people living there but you realize that the place is not kept the front is dirty there, 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 there's dirt all around the, 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 the trees uh, or the weeds have shut up and the place just looks messy God expects us sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when he's trying to show us something, he expects us to look at it and consider. And that's what happened. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Sometimes, even movies, I receive instruction from movies. Yeah. Because when something happens, you can just see, you know, like... It's, 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 it's a sermon in, in itself if you use the Bible to fit into it or you fit it into the Bible in a way to talk about things that are negative that can happen when people reject God or things that can happen when people take shortcuts or things that can happen when people walk in love or do well whatever it is you can learn from it revenge how it destroys I was, the movie revenge I finished the, the series revenge <laughs> By the time the, 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 the series was over, uh -huh. the death that occurred, the, the, the distraction, look, she almost lost her life, almost lost everything. People she loved, dear, dear beloved people were lost, died. Yeah. So I, I learned it about how unforgiveness and revenge, how it can destroy lives. And how it is a very destructive thing, unforgiveness. But I, I, I watched it and I saw how and I also saw how a father, because of his love, the father was terminally ill and ready to die. He had less than six months to live. And the daughter was framed for murder. The woman pretended to have been murdered by a, the revenger. And she wanted to also revenge. <laughs> so she pretended to have been killed, planted evidence, to, pretended to have been killed by the revenger one. <laughs> so she went to another place and was about to travel somewhere and then so that this lady will have life imprisonment in, yeah and they found out the truth now when this lady was going to the revenge and one was about to shoot her because she escaped from prison and if she hadn't found her she'll be she'll have life imprisonment in, in, in prison even though she was innocent she was about to shoot the woman ready to pull the trigger and then, go! Oh! The woman fell down and she, she turned back because she didn't shoot. Her father shot the woman for her. Because he knew that if he was trying to talk her down, she would shoot still. So he shot the woman for her so that she would be clean and not go to jail so that she can have a life. And he's ill. He's about to die. So they gave him compassionate release to spend time with his daughter. <laughs> so I learned something from that. You see, <laughs> hallelujah. So thinking and considering. So he, he, he thought and considered and said, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. And then finally, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. So he, he, he realized that someone who is lazy, someone who does not maintain things, Someone who has a business and does not learn more, learn about how to improve the business, learn about how to improve your life, learn about how to, to develop yourself. You see a building, you have a nice building, and you don't maintain it. Or you behave like those in Minnesota a long time ago who did not maintain the bridges. And the bridge fell down, like where they were in Africa. The bridge fell. Maintenance. Because they were not able to maintain. So, so, so I don't know if you guess what I'm saying. Because of that, poverty came. So what God showed this person was that when someone is lazy and leaves things without maintaining them, poverty would follow. And want will come like an armed person. So poverty would travel, meaning poverty will succeed, will, will push strong and prevail. Wow. Hallelujah. So, it's important for us to meditate on things. Think deeply about things. Think deeply about the word of God. I remember as I started to think deeply about the word of God, and I realized that Jesus, 
Yes, we all hear about the son of Joseph. But I realized that ah, if technically, if we had really been honest and we are thinking about it, if Jesus did not, if, if uh, uh, no, sorry, Jesus from the line of Joseph, who was from the line of Abraham. But if you are really being honest, if Jesus was supposed to be from the line of David properly, then his mother should have been from Abraham also and David, to be honest. But so I had to think deeply and prove it out. Because if you didn't prove it out, because if that's not the case, then, it, I mean, there are questions. So Luke gives the genealogy of Mary to Adam. And Matthew gives the genealogy of the father. For Jesus to have the, the legal right to rule and the biological right to rule from his mother. Because, hallelujah. So, but I'm saying that just thinking deeply about just life. Thinking deeply. So we need to meditate look and consider let's meditate on things let's ponder upon things why do we do what we do as christians why do we even do certain things think and ponder upon it and when once you accept it it is it but what i'm talking about even like tongues uh, 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 outreach different things why do we do what we do what is motivating us to do what we are doing I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Fasting. Why do we fast as Christians? Is it important to fast? The disciples of John were fasting, but the disciples of Jesus were not fasting. Someone asked me that question. I can't remember who. Yeah, yeah I think I know who. Yeah. I love those questions because it gets me to also think when people ask me questions. So the, the disciples of John were fasting. The disciples of Jesus were not fasting. Why? Because the bridegroom was there. Hallelujah. Yeah. But you, you, you have, you see, so we need to be thinking. When you are thinking deeply, it would generate questions. Number three. Acknowledging and honoring is a step to knowledge. Luke chapter 11 verse 31. What do you think? Amen. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So you realize that Great achievers should be recognized and honored. Look, for example, at Albert Einstein. How many know him? When, when he was on earth, yeah, he was honored in a way, but now he's honored greatly. Just because of simple equation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> e equals to mc squared. Simple equation. And his theory of general and special relativity. Because of time, I'll, I'll just move to the next. Otherwise, I'll start to explain time dilation and all that stuff. <laughs> the art students are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the art students, so we need more time because of the art students. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Listening and hearing is the next step to knowledge. Very important. Now let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 44. We're going from 44 to 51. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Church, are we receiving God's word? Yes. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. 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 But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinfolk, or kinsfolk, and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they returned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Imagine traveling so far. And when, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, 
the doctors who had studied the scriptures. They didn't know that they were speaking to the word of God himself. <laughs> the doctors both hearing them. So Jesus was both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So they heard him uh, 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 asking questions. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, sorry, the one before uh, where we were just. And uh, the, the 46. Good, beautiful. They, they heard him uh, uh, both hearing them. So Jesus was hearing what the doctors of the law were saying. And he was asking them questions. Then when you look at 47, it gives you a complete picture. His understanding and answers. So it could be that as he was asking them questions, he was asking them questions to prove things. And then they will ask him questions and he will answer them. Because it's not the fact that you are asking a question does not mean that you don't know it. Just like Jesus will sometimes ask, what if, 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 if David, we call uh, uh, the son, uh, if we call the Messiah the son of David, then how can David call him Lord? Jesus was asking them the question to prove it out. The reason why I feel that is from the word and answers. They were, they were amazed at his understanding and answers. He was explaining. How many are getting what I'm saying? So listening and hearing. So that's why sometimes it's important to listen and to hear. Hallelujah. Learn. And Jesus, he had so much understanding that, you know, in those days, they didn't have verses and chapters. Just Isaiah, Jeremiah, just the books. So when Jesus went to the temple, I mean, to the, the synagogue, the Bible says that he opened the book and found where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he must have been found because he was God and he is God himself. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's move on. Number six. Understanding is the next step to wisdom. Matthew 13, 19 to 21. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm being blessed. Amen. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth, received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Hallelujah. The key is, and understandeth it not. So when someone hears the word of God and does not understand the word of God, then they are not able to retain the word of God or benefit from the word of God. And therefore, there is no wisdom. Because the Bible makes it clear that wisdom comes from the word of God. The word of God is our wisdom. The word of God is our wisdom. So if you and I can't understand, I'm not even talking about the spirit of understanding, just the preaching and you can't understand it, then it means that, according to this verse, the devil takes the word, takes it away. And if the word has been taken away, how can the wisdom be in you? Because it's been taken off. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory to God. Amen. What do you think? Understanding is the next step to wisdom. When people do not ask questions, they often do not gain understanding. Knowing something in a shallow way is very different from knowing something in a great depth. People who argue a lot over little points reveal a lack of understanding. And number seven... 
Copying is a big step to acquiring knowledge and wisdom. Copying. Now, copying is important. Now, why is copying important? I'll just use Einstein. Hey, Reverend Mark, God bless you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Blessing. I'm preaching powerful. Now, why is copying important? If the, the, the astronomers and the scientists said that, you know what? Einstein has written his theory. Let's leave it. And let's start afresh. We will not be where we are. They had to copy or take, copy his theories, copy everything he has and expand upon it. So usually when you copy something, then you start where they were with just a few details to get understanding. I thought you, yes, you can put your hands together for the Lord. So you copy, you start from where they were, when you, where you copied from. And then you develop upon it. But of course, you need some understanding of what you are copying. But that will come with time. And then you develop upon it. And that's how come we have rockets. Mm -hmm. We have all these theories. Newton's law of motion. All these things are as a result of copying. Copying, copying what the other person has done. Someone will say, no, I want my own original theory. You know there's Alotis, Alotis theory, right? Yeah. But it's not been expanded. People don't know much about it. Maybe if it was an American... It would have been known all over the world. <laughs> Alote's theory. <laughs> Professor Alote. <laughs> God's got him. <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 22. But copying is a good thing. When you copy the right things. And you copy legally. And you copy properly. You don't just copy. You don't copy someone's schoolwork. You don't copy someone's assignment. You don't copy someone's exam. You don't do that. Some people are copying. Can I see? Can I see what you have? No, 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 no. That's not the copying we are talking about. You don't copy everything. You copy that. And you don't copy the negative things. You don't copy wrong things people are doing. We don't copy wrong things. We don't copy someone who is doing negative things stealing, lying, fornicating, uh, 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 doing all sorts of things. Copy someone who, is, uh, 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 who has bad choices, making bad choices. We don't copy such things. We copy good things. Be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Hallelujah. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. I think we talked about that. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to bind up, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And, and he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. Imagine, because they were waiting for that person that was written. So he opened it, closed, sat down. And he closed the book and sat down and the eyes of all men that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. Because you don't do that. You don't just read a verse, close it and sit down. <laughs> verse 21, I tell you. And he began to say unto them that, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. When he said that, they almost threw him off the cliff. They almost threw him. When you, when you keep reading, when he said that, wow, are you? Yeah, they got very upset. Because he was trying to say that he's the Messiah. Hallelujah, as you keep reading on. So, most things cannot be understood. 
in their entirety. When you and I start copying and doing things that others are doing, you begin to grow in understanding. It is as you obey that you understand the reason why things are done in a certain way. Very important. So sometimes it is as we obey God, as sometimes God will tell us to do something, and it's as we obey God that we understand why he gave us the commandment. Because many of the commandments are difficult to understand. Many of the things that God tells us to do, you ask, is it necessary? But it is necessary. Because it is when you have obeyed it that you will see the fruit of it. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So I want to encourage us to copy, copy. When you look at those ahead of you, the Bible says that we must be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. So what do I say? What I'm saying is look at David and copy just the good things he did. He did ev everything good apart from the situation with Uriah. So don't copy that one. <laughs> copy everything else in Jesus' name. Don't go and take someone's wife and kill the man. Hallelujah. Copy everything David did because David was the best for God. I mean, God loved the guy. Copy Daniel who said, look, I'll prefer to die than to go against God. Yes, I'll be, thro be thrown into the den of lions. Okay, it's okay. Follow Daniel. Follow Joseph. Who, who every one of us would have understood why he, he did not forgive and punished his brothers. But Joseph didn't do that. Joseph forgave and rather made an excuse for the brothers and said, what you, my, you guys meant for evil, God has turned it around for good. And that he has actually used me to bring life and to preserve our lives. So, so let's follow Joseph's example. Follow Joseph's example. Follow the heroes of faith. Follow Abraham's example. Follow his example. Follow Sarah's example. Not to go and get your maid to uh, 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 yeah, come and help. Hallelujah. Don't make that mistake or the guy might fall for it. <laughs> Abraham, at least Abraham we are looking at, he fell for it, so be careful. Jacob, don't follow his scheming ideas. Don't follow his trickery. Don't follow his, his, his connections. Don't follow his... I don't know, when you watch the blacklist and these things, you always see that, no, there's going to be a war. There's somebody has some nuclear weapon. No, this person, once it is on this, uh, in this state, this person knows, and they'll go to the person. That's Jacob. <laughs> That's Jacob. Once there is something going down, Jacob will know. Don't follow that. Connections. Rather, follow the man who said, I'm not perfect, but... I want the blessing from God. I want that blessing. You have it, but I want it. This is the blessing. I want the blessing. I want it. Follow that about Jacob who, who wanted the blessing. And pushed for the blessing. And, 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 and tried to convince. Did everything he could to convince for the blessing. Follow Jacob who saw that, ah, is that God? And I've been able to hold him. I'll die here. If you don't bless me, I'm dying here. God, you are going to kill me here. He said, I'm not going to let you go. Bless me. And then God struck him. And that should have been enough to run away. He said, look, I'm dying here if you don't bless me. Bless me. And then it was getting to daybreak. And God didn't want people to see him. So God said, I have to, I have to go, I have to go. He said, I'm holding on. And then God blessed him and changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Follow Jacob. So we must be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So, so let's, let's and, and how do we do it? We can't see God physically now. If we, if we were in 2,000 years ago, we'll hold Jesus. I, I will say, you, are not, I'm, you bless me, I'm not going anywhere. But we can do that in prayer in the word. We can pray to God and say, say tell God, God bless me. Bless me, Lord. Give me what, whatever you're asking for, Lord. Do it, I'm not going to let you go. One of the God's generals, he locked himself in a room and said, God, I want a double portion of your anointing. I'll die here if I don't get it. 
I'm going to lock myself in a closet. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to wait and pray and I'm going to trust you for a double portion. So follow also those here, like Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So if Apostle Paul is saying that imitate me as I imitate Christ, then imitate the things that the, our leaders, our, our, our prophet, and all the leaders are doing that, are taking them forward. Let's imitate them in that. Hallelujah. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me. Follow my example of how I follow Christ. Because so far as I'm following Christ, follow me closely. If I'm not following Christ, then don't follow me. I don't know that you are hearing what I'm talking about. So you and I, let's learn to copy. Sometimes, I I love, I'm in the New Testament for some time. For if I over a year. And I read a few Old Testament verses. But when I, I, I will go back to the Old Testament. When you are reading the stories of the Old Testament. You, you learn so many things. You understand how God feels and how sometimes God gets angry and the things that touch God's heart. And this touch the heart of God. You understand some of these things. And there are many lessons and examples of ways to touch God's heart that you can see in the, in the Old Testament. And it will make it easier to follow the heroes of faith. Follow them. Follow me as I follow Christ. What do you think? And I believe God will bless us. All the heroes of faith that were blessed, what are you and I looking for? Is it riches? Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was very rich. If you and I aim to be rich, we will err. But if you and I trust God to be rich, but riches are not important or a, 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 a must, riches are not a desire, because all those who desire to be rich will err, the Bible says. So I want to be rich by the grace of God, to be able to support the work of God, and to, of course, have a decent, nice lifestyle. But if I'm not rich, it's not going to bother me. I just trust God based on his word. Actually, I, I, I declare I'll be rich because the Bible says so. That's why I, I'm doing it in faith. If the Bible said, look, you can decide to be rich. You can decide. In fact, don't bother deciding to be rich unless you, you have to. I won't, I'll just say I'll be extra comfortable. But I want to be rich because the Bible says Jesus Christ was rich and became poor so that through his poverty will be rich. But if riches are a must, I desire to be rich. I have to be rich. I'll err. If your focus is on riches, you will err. We will err. We will, we will miss the mark. God will be displeased with us because we want to be rich. We have to be rich. There's a difference between I want to be rich or by faith because God said I can be rich. I'll, I'll aim to be, I, I, I won't aim, but I would like to be rich. And I'll confess that I'll be rich. But if per adventure God decides that, look, I'll make you comfortable and not rich, it is not a problem. When you have that attitude, you will not cut corners. You will not be do wrong things. You will not be, do uh, unethical things. You will not do things that will displease God to be rich. You will just leave God to do it and do your best. Hallelujah. So whatever we are looking for, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I'm not at a word. I'm just at a time. Shall we stand to our feet? Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Father God, help us. Speak to the Lord. Ask him to give you wisdom, supernatural wisdom. Father God, we pray for supernatural wisdom and direction. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Direction. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God, we pray. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify thy name. If you are watching, 
just before I let you go on social media, if you are watching and you know in your heart that you are not born again, you know in your heart that you are far away from God, you know in your heart that you need forgiveness, if you know in your heart that you are not going to heaven when you die, then I want you to repeat after me. Very important. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe, I believe that, his blood, that his blood was shed for my sins. For my sins. I, believe I believe that God raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Please come into my, heart. Please come into my life. Come into my life. Forgive, me Forgive me for all my sins. All my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, from today, I belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. If you've said this prayer for the first time, you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. You are as white as snow, washed with the blood of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are now an heir, joint heir with Jesus Christ. Now, I want to encourage you to look for a church. If you don't have a church, you can join us. You can just send a message. Hallelujah. And God will bless you. Father God, I thank you for each and everyone who is giving their lives to Christ and all watching on all the social media platforms and in church bless them oh god bless us preserve us keep us keep us alive deliver us from every pestilence every evil every accident every problem in the name of jesus christ father god preserve us father god may your face shine upon us may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord jesus cause his face to shine upon you may he lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you peace in Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. And just before I hand over to uh, 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 MS Fred to continue.